Hi friends, this is Sukhmani Kargil, OET trainer and today I am here to discuss the solutions of day 2. So as you know, there are 4 modules, reading, listening, writing and speaking. So let's begin with the reading module and in the reading module you know there are 2 modules, there are 2 parts. So let's begin with part A of reading and the today's topic is playground injuries. So I will recall the answers from question number 1 to 30. So first is concussions, second is daycare centers, third is injuries, fourth is swings, fifth is potentially dangerous, sixth is quite hard, seventh one is sand, eighth is recommended, here you need to use passive form and playground injuries is ninth answer, tenth is fall height, eleventh is surface material, twelfth one is surfaces, thirteenth is higher. 14th is sand, 15th is wrists and 16th is ankles and 17th is awkward, 18th is reduced. Here you need to change noun to verb. 19th is depth. Here also you need to change adjective to noun. It's written deep there. You have to change it to depth. 20th is gravel. 21st is extent. Then 22nd is height. Here also you need to change from adjective to noun. 23rd is 3 meters. 24th is regularly. 25th is 5 to 9. 26th is girls. 27th is boys. 28th is low income areas. 29th is dangerous. Here you, you, you have to use the word opposite to safe. 30th is rusty. R-U-S-T-Y. So let's see where these answers are located. So let's move on to the part B of reading as you know there are two texts for part B. So let's begin with the first text which is having multiple choice questions. So answer to the first question it's B. B as in beta. Why it's correct? Because the line is written in the passage that improving general infection control procedures and Preparedness has the potential to improve routine health care on a daily basis as well as improve our ability to manage the next pandemic. So this is the location for first question. Second question. The answer is B. That is B as in beta because it is false. Others are true. A is true because it is written overcrowding that is common to all western countries. And C is true because it is written routine infection control procedures such as hand washing, changing gowns becomes and between patients were not possible. So D is also true. So we are left with B that is false. Why? Because it is written a separation of at least 1 meter should be maintained between patients and staff, not patients and staff. It, they are not saying between the staff, staff members. In the option they have written between staff members but no. Here they are saying patients and staff wherever possible. So I think it's clear. Moving further to question number 3. Its answer is C. Why? Because this is partly related to ward layout. Yeah. So that is why answer is C. Now fourth one. Its answer is A. Why? Because it is written, it is unclear whether high performance masks, if for example N95 are needed or whether fit testing is required. So it is unclear. That is why it's A. Now let's move on to the fifth one. Answer to fifth question. It is A. Why? Because it is not mentioned and pressed. Others are all are mentioned. So B is mentioned. Why? Because it is written design flaws are present in many hospitals. So there they are talking about the design flaws. And C1, it is also mentioned because it is written turbulent ventilation across patient areas. So D is also mentioned. So we left with A, that is not mentioned, that is why it's correct. Why? Because negative uh, pressure rooms are frequently in short supply. So, if they exist at all and would be insufficient in a pandemic, it's not mentioned. We have talked about this thing. So, let's move on to the next question. That is question number 6. It is having two answers, A and C. Why A? Because it is written, the absence of legislation empowering governments 
to compel the health authorities and hospital to comply with directives led to confusion and often incomplete compliance. So this is why the answer is A and why it's C because an upgrade regional approach for an infectious disease outbreak is essential. So this is mentioned. That is why the answers are A and C. I hope all the answers from one question number one to six are clear to you. So let's move on to the second passage of part B. The topic for the second passage of part B is doctors behaving badly. So the answer to the first question it's D. Why? Because it is mentioned there in the first paragraph. So just read it, you'll come to know about that. Now, second question. Answer to the second question, it's D because it's false. You are asked about the false one and other three are true. Why? A is true because it is written, no patient harm comes from this practice. So that is why it's true. Now, second one is also true. B is also true. Why? Because drug company sponsorship serves to oil the wheels of medical education. So C is also true. Why? Because it is written, industry sponsored events provide valuable opportunities for doctors to critically question the company's product. So D is false. It is not mentioned. Question number three. The answer is C. If you see, if you read the whole paragraph, the summary of the viewpoint says C only. So that is why the answer is C. Question number four. Answer to the question number four is D because if we read all those things, so best choice is D only. Others are also true. See, A is true. Why? Because professional incompetence is mentioned in the paragraph. B is true. Why? Because deceptions and manifest conflicts of interest is also mentioned. And C is also correct. Why? Because abuses of power. So we are left with D. That is the correct option. That is the best choice. So, answer is B. Fifth one, its answer is C. Why C? A is not true. Why? Because it is written not evitable. And B is also incorrect. Why? Because in the passage it is written not common. So, we are left with C. Why? Because it, they, the line is there but distinguish, distinguishing where there are no conflicts between the interest from where there is a genuine. That line, genuine conflict of interest in uh, is sometimes difficult. That is mentioned. That is the line. So let's move on to the next question. Question number six. Answer to the sixth one. It's A. Why? Because it is written out of fear of legal or social repercussions. Repercussions is, you know, I, I hope you know the meaning. It is consequences, results. And then question number seven is B. B as in beta. Why? Because the line is written in the passage. Transparency and honest disclosure may actually reduce the loss of trust. So if you read that line, just relate that line with option B, you will get the correct answer. So I think all the answers to both the passages are clear to you. So we are completed with the reading part. Now let's begin with the next module that is writing module. So next is your writing task. First of all, let's see which is the letter, what, what topic is today's letter is. So let's read the writing task. Tracy will require support and assistance to manage her children when she returns home. So it is about support and assistance. Using, using the information in the discharge summary, write a letter of referral to the community health nurse, Ray Wills, who will assist Tracy at home. So it is about assistance and support and the name of the patient is Tracy and to whom we are writing, her name is Ray Wills. She is community health nurse. So let's read the case history of the patient. So the case history says that the patient's name is Tracy Chapman and she is 20 year old single woman with three children and she was admitted for an appendectomy and has recovered. So she is ready to be discharged home. So she is ready to be discharged. Name is given to you, age is 20 years, admitted on 18th of April 1990. Discharged on 23rd of April 1990. Diagnosis is acute appendicitis and operation is appendectomy on 18th of April 1990. So let's read the social background of the patient. 
Social background says that single with three children aged 18 months, 3 years and 4 years. So the age of our babies are 18 months, 3 years and 4 years. So lives in a rented flat with her children. The father of the children has no contact so she has no contact with her partner and only income is a single mother's pension so she is uh, getting assistance through this that is she on, is on single mother pension has several friends who work full time so she is having good friend circle but everybody is working full time so there is nobody to help her then Tracy's mother she is caring for the children but will be returning to her home in the country when Tracy comes home so Tracy's mother is living here but she also will be returning her home after her discharge next you are given with the nursing management in progress so it says that routine post operative recovery tolerating a light diet and fluids working normally then minimal pain is there relieved with two panadol three times a day then wound healed sutures removed so these are the things included in the nursing management means her wound is healed, sutures are removed. So minimal pain is there, for that she is taking two panadol. So now, now let's read the discharge summary. Discharge plan of the patient says she requires rest, moderate exercise, no heavy lifting or activity for six weeks and high protein diet is required by the patient and her wound needs to be observed for infection and counsel home health. So when she is she requires counsel home help that is uh, assistance in household chores, assistance with coping up with three children and, and all other shopping and cooking everything. So she needs some help in that as she is living alone. So this is all about the patient. Now what you need to do is in the first paragraph you will write the purpose of writing. You will introduce the patient and you have to say that uh, she underwent this operation and now she is ready to be discharged. Then you have to tell about her medical progress, what is his, her medical progress, like her wound is healed and all and all you have to say this. Then you have to say that she is living alone, her, she has no contact with the father of the baby and her, she is having three children, her mother is living there, her, she is staying there in her absence but she will be returning home. Then you have to tell, then we have to emphasize, so my main focus, my main concern is that she needs some home help and following this charge she requires rest and following this charge she requires rest, moderate exercise and she needs to avoid heavy lifting also, she requires high protein diet also and there can be infection also, all the things you need to mention in the end. So this is how you need to attend this letter. So please take care of connectors, you have to include connectors like moreover, moreover is there, therefore is there, moreover is there, furthermore is there and apart from this is there or you can say however in addition to this so you please use these things also please take care after every connector there is always a comma so i hope writing task for today is clear to you now let's move on to the other module that is speaking module next is speaking module and in the speaking module we need to be confident and follow proper format like you have to begin with the warm greetings for complete all the tasks and convey all the information to the patient then you have to do good ending of your role play. So let's see what is the topic for today. You are a nurse talking to the patient who is recovering from minor knee fracture. So patient is recovering from minor knee fracture. Patient asks you of when he can be able to go home as he has exams next month. So he wants to go home because he is having exam next month. As a nurse you have to assure him that he will be alright soon. He can take the exam as well. Advise him of the importance of taking medicine on time. Then suggest some easy exercises also that will help to bring some improvement in his knee. So these all are the things you need to take care. So what you need to do in here? You just have to introduce yourself, begin with warm greeting. 
it is patient what patient is admitted there you can say so how are you feeling today he will say i'm fine is there any pain or not have you taken your how was your sleep last night if it is morning then you can ask this then if it is uh, after the morning you can say uh, have you taken your breakfast or not and what about the medications are you having any problem or you can say if he is tense you can say i can sense you are tense so may i know the reason what seems to be bothering you then he will say that i just want to ask when i when can i go home then you have to say that you will be all right soon it will take some time for the recovery because it was knee fracture but it was minor so you are you are recovering well and you have to follow proper medication advice of the doctor and proper diet then he will say i am having exam you can say okay when is your exam he will say uh, next month you can say oh then it's okay you can take your exam as well and then you have to assure him that he is a uh, fit to take his exam then you have to suggest him importance of taking medications on time do not skip the medication follow proper instructions by the doctor and also uh, the follow the precautions take care of precautions and also he needs to take care of exercises also you can say there are some exercises but that is good for improvement you can if you have want to suggest you can say you can rotate rotate your feet clockwise anti clockwise stretch your legs you can say this but you have to say do not bend your leg so you have to say this then after that you can say if possible if you allow us we can fix your appointment with the physiotherapist after doctor's permission and he may assist you in exercises then you have to talk about the diet also that he has to take calcium rich diet and diet plays important role because medicines are important but diet is the most important thing then and in the and then you have to after reassuring him you have to say okay have rest and i need to leave now if you have any query please press the buzzer i will be there for your help you have to say this so this is all about today's role play i think everything is clear there is nothing um, any difficult difficulty is there to conduct this role play i think everything is clear so friends let's uh, i think uh, the, this module is clear to you next is your listing module and this module you are having two parts in part a uh, it is a consultation and today's consultation is between doctor and patient and name of the patient it's john scott and you just have to write the usual behavior or you can say symptoms signs and symptoms reasons family history of the patient social history of the patient medical history interest hobbies these are the things you, these are the things are asked by the examiner so in the second part of the listing you are given uh, about topic about alzheimer's disease means you will hear a lecture on alzheimer's disease you just have to complete the gaps complete the tables ask the multiple choice questions complete the sentences so make notes please take care please remember do not write the full sentences write in brief make notes you can uh, use the short forms abbreviations also and write as much as you can so to score b grade minimum 65% of the total number of blanks so i hope all the modules for day 2 are clear to you so let's see what you do and see you in the next video that is day 3 bye bye till then take care